Eric Porter has been a pro mountain biker for the better part of 20 years. He's always riding a fresh bike with fresh gear and traveling to incredible destinations. He even has the dream backyard nestled in a picturesque valley in Utah. But despite this absolute dream that Eric is living, his garage is a wreck. Sure, the view from it is incredible, but the only thing incredible about the inside is just how much crap Eric has crammed in there. I suspect that Drama takes more care in organizing his toy box than Eric does putting away his things after a long trip. He has a busy travel schedule, lots of hobbies, and a family, all taking priority over this garage. But as a professional, Eric needs to actually work on his bike in this space. Activities will happen and we'll have fun, and one thing stacks on top of another as far as the activities go, and then next thing you know, you know, it looks like this. If everything had a better home, we'd be in much better shape. And that's why I'm here this weekend. We're dragging everything out of Eric's garage, hitting the drawing board, and then hopefully building a functional and attractive workshop in under three days. And it needs to hold what's left of this stuff after we're done sorting it. As we go through all this debris, it's becoming clear that Eric has some hoarding tendencies. Hey, you never know. My philosophy is that if you haven't gone looking for something lately, you might not need it. But unlike a true hoarder, totally resistant to logic, Eric is very willing to retrain himself to prioritize this space over the stuff in it. Staying organized is all about finding a home for everything. And if something doesn't have a home, you need to either make one or get rid of said thing. Working late into Friday night, we were able to clear most of the garage out so we could start bright and early on real projects. Project number one is the snack shelf, where Eric inventories all of his bike fuel. I'm working on a way to make it easier to access and easier on the eyes. Meanwhile, Eric is working on the corner by the wood-burning stove. While this stove is great during the winter, it heats up too much to use the surrounding area for storage. So we're finishing the wall in galvanized sheet metal to turn the area into a kind of backdrop and display case. With a very light spray of black paint, the metal will look raw and garagey without being too reflective for video and photography. Meanwhile, I fit the snack station with angled shelves to make Eric's cliff bar assortment easier to get to. It's now possible to keep more boxes open and accessible, while the area behind the shelves can be used for additional storage. But this snack station and display area are basically side projects. The main task at hand is Eric's workbench. In any shop, the workbench is where the magic happens. So aside from clearing it off and making it functional again, we need to turn this bench into something impressive. To clear the area below the bench, I put a shelf which will contain wooden crates. On the left side, I installed retractable spools for his air hose and power cord to keep them neatly tucked away. But making this bench more spacious and functional isn't that impressive. For it to be fit for a pro, it has to look sick. This bracket attached to Eric's chainsaw is called an Alaska mill, and we're using it to cut planks from raw timber. As you can imagine, these planks look friggin' awesome, which is why we're using them for the tool wall. As Eric cuts the raw planks, I square them up, first by cutting one edge straight, and then measuring off of that edge to make the whole thing rectangular. This would be a lot easier with a table saw, but we didn't come across one while clearing out the garage. Luckily, these planks don't need to be perfect. The inconsistent thickness and finish on the wood is kind of the look we're going for. As this bench comes together, I'm getting a lot of ideas for what my next garage could look like. The 
you can be sure we used this fun bench project as a tool for procrastination, as all that crap we unloaded yesterday still needed to be organized into bins. Like we already discussed, an organized and functional workspace should have a home for everything. And sometimes that home is in a bin. Late into the night we sorted the contents of the garage, and filled these bins to create space for space. And whatever we couldn't get done that night would be left for the third and final day. The day where we'd hopefully finish this project and get to do some celebrating. We started that day by planning for success. We're gonna smoke this thing all day long. The first project of the day was to replace these fluorescent fixtures with LEDs. LEDs are brighter, more efficient, and flicker free. While filming in here, these will end up being a huge benefit. Then to get the tools up on the wall. Like any tool wall, this can be altered and rearranged. However, I left it with a pretty good mix of commonly used tools with everything else in the box to the right. The hex wrenches are front and center, poking out of this live edge block for easy access. Everything else is hung up on nails, which is low tech but more secure than the pegboard that was once here. With everything coming together, I could work on the other workbench, the Grom bench. It's complete with everything a kid needs to transform nuts into circles. We've installed a PCS-12 mounted at kid height. Eventually we'll need to raise the height of the stand and include a more complete set of tools. But for now, this is a great place to start. And not only will Eric's two sons get to enjoy this garage with him, they'll also remember the weekend we toiled in here. We spent the better part of 40 hours over the course of three days, all to achieve a goal. Eric has a lot of cool stuff, but kids don't always get to witness firsthand the blood and sweat that goes into earning cool stuff. This garage serves as a reminder. Now we got a barbecue. By late afternoon on day three, we had our celebration in sight. After 20 years of riding bikes professionally, Eric finally has a workspace truly fit for a pro. Now there's a home for everything. Easy access to air, electricity, and tools. The entire Porter family can now locate their gear and easily put it away when they're through with it. And it's all in a place that feels good to spend time in. With a few hours of sunlight left to work with, I decided to use this new shop to assemble my bike. Even though I'd need to take it back apart before my flight the next morning, we were going to ride and celebrate at any cost. This yard was covered in snow only a week ago, and everyone riding that night had basically cleared the cobwebs off their bikes before arriving. They could have fooled me. Last year we built this small double for Milo, and now Owen is clearing it on his ridiculously small bike. Come to think of it, Owen sends it on anything he can get his hands on. Dustin attempted this 360 triple bar spin I don't know how many times, and it was a spectacle just to watch him masterfully bail out of it. If you want to see Dustin land this, keep an eye on his Instagram. Somehow I didn't leave in an ambulance that night either. Aside from hacking a few landings, I was feeling really good. <laughs> so it was time to settle the score with Eric's back porch. Yo! Ew. Ew. 
First session of the year, awesome weather, no wind, the whole crew's here, the dirt's perfect. And the garage is insane, I can't even believe it. I don't, like every time I walk back in, it's just mind blowing, it doesn't even feel like mine yet. Smiles, food, and good times all around. We had the successful project and celebration we had originally envisioned. That weekend of hard work could have ended in rain, or an evening flight out of town, but everything came together perfectly in the final hours. The entire Porter family is really stoked for this new space, and it was sitting right under their noses this whole time. All it took was a mark on the calendar and a little planning to get it done. And a few hundred dollars worth of bins. And maybe a few impulse buys like this saw, but my point is that we all have something we've been putting off doing, and finally committing to that task can be intimidating. But the reward can be way worth it. So what project are you going to dive into this spring? Thanks for riding with me today and I'll see you next time.